Hello there and welcome to the Hash Power Academy, your place to learn anything to do with Bitcoin. Now, here's the thing. If you've been watching my previous videos, you will notice that this is a different whiteboard and this is a different wall. This is because I'm in a different country. I am in Dallas, Texas in the USA for a couple of weeks. So if there's any Bitcoin companies or mining companies that would like to show me an interesting mining site or setup, I'm all game. So here's the thing, this video is just going to be a short and sweet one to get into the nature of understanding the three fundamental commodities of the Bitcoin network, electricity, hash power and Bitcoin. Now, I have covered this sort of way of explaining things in previous videos, but the thing I'm going to sort of emphasize here is this, that if you go back in time to Satoshi Nakamoto, he consumed electrons, produced hashes and produced Bitcoin exactly the same as today but not with the different technologies now we have better mining hardware faster more efficient different cooling systems different cooling system types and all these sorts of things the technology branch of consuming electricity to produce hash rate that is complexifying in its own way into the future the bitcoin blockchain the hash rate that's producing it, the mining pools and all these sorts of things. I haven't written them all in, just keeping the focus on these three commodities. And then the Bitcoin that's produced, the output of blocks being added to the chain, electrons being uploaded to the internet. And the bit that I find the most interesting is this branch as well. That's where I see the Bitcoin unit of account branch that the ele electrical inputs into society begin the first Bitcoin unit of account, second to block space, the cost of data storage to pay to store your information online forever. And what I'm trying to explain with this is that everything is going to change with the technologies in between the commodities, but these three commodities will not change. This one is contained to 21 million units, but these two expand. And also in other videos, you will have seen that I show it typically in a linear series, the cost to produce electricity, the hash rate side of things from Bitcoin mining, the Bitcoin blockchain, all the different moving parts and metrics, and obviously Bitcoin coming out the other end. But that is not the end of the story. The future of this is the interconnectivity of all three commodities together the demand response side things on the electrical grid, such as here in Texas, the ERCOT electrical grid has demand response programs. That fluctuation of supply and demand of power has a new buyer of power that is just an economic user. So if the economics change the other way and to sell the electrons instead of consume them, there is stability offered to the grid and higher economic return to the miners. Because you've got to think of it like this, a Bitcoin miner is optimizing for 100% uptime, which means they need a grid or a power source with effective 100% uptime. That is the perfection aspect, and we're continually working towards it. We want to get maximum uptime. So Bitcoin miners are incentivized to help the grid as much as possible because that's their source, their source input. And then all of the different aspects of hash rate and the complexities uh, going into the future of being hash rate being this reusable proof of work commodity that is going to complexify in of itself but what's not going to change is its use and its expansion the the network hash rate going up to one zeta hash potentially this cycle i think it's possible but with all this expansion of electricity that everyone needs compute that everyone needs and even the build out of ai being helped by bitcoin mining because bitcoin mining per megawatt in terms of cost is one tenth of the price to build out. So if you're trying to access large power contracts, you can build out Bitcoin mining to access those power contracts at one tenth of the cost of AI. So all of this physical build out, whilst this digital race is trying to, to race even further ahead, quicker than the physical constraints of how much energy and compute we can produce, well, Bitcoin being this accelerant, all the different things we need in society, whether it's the energy sector, compute microchip aspects or finance and the future there, that as things change into the future, what will not change is the relationship between these three core commodities. So with Bitcoin mining, again, I'm not 
an art student, so forgive me here. Bitcoin mining. What is the key exchange rate? Or well, efficiency, shall we say, not exchange rate. Joules per terahash. That is the direct conversion of electrical consumption for output hash rate. And on the blockchain side of things, it's here, we've got hash rate going to produce Bitcoin blocks. That is typically in mining pools. And here's the thing. Bitcoin mining pools are the ones holding the pen of the accounting system. And all of the different complexities going into the future on the blockchain side of things are new op codes, new decisions of how much block space there should be or shouldn't be, all the different debates, chaos and changes. What will not change? 21 million units, expansion of hash rate, expansion of compute. So the expansion here and constraint here with the constant changes of different layers and different, oh, there's endless. There's just continual complexity in the technology branches. I always use solar as the nice, easy drawing example. Again, I'm not an art student. <laughs> um, so yeah, now here is the interesting one after I put hash price in there, BTC per terahash per day. Bitcoin as a unit of account, the understanding of how to buy something with a quantity of Bitcoin in your mind, not a quantity of dollars and using Bitcoin as the settlement layer, which people like Jack Dorsey and block wanting to use payment terminals where you can pay Bitcoin. That's great. If I go in and purchase a three dollar coffee, it's not priced in Bitcoin. I've just paid with Bitcoin with dollar as a unit of account. But that's OK for today. The transition into the future, in my opinion, is Bitcoin per kilowatt hour. Or kilowatt for the cost of building our energy infrastructure. What will Bitcoin bonds be used for in the future, probably building out large energy infrastructure projects because they have the energy potential to produce compute, to produce more Bitcoin. So you have to understand that anything ha that has a fundamental relationship to electricity, compute or Bitcoin is going to have a mathematical relationship to a quantity of Bitcoin. And that quantity can derive into a quantity of kilowatt hours. There is a cost to produce one Bitcoin for a miner with a typical efficiency. And so what I'm trying to explain here is these three um, mathematical functions, essentially, and variables, metrics, these three represent the key core metrics as to how to understand your, your ability to accumulate sats or build out things in relation to the different areas of the network. But Bitcoin per kilowatt hour represents, in my opinion, the second Bitcoin unit of account commodity, that comparison of electrons in the quantity of sats. Because Bitcoin miners are already on the electrical grid, such as here in uh, Texas, ERCOT, where if the electrons have a higher economic return to be sold back to the grid, aka the, the amount of dollar per Bitcoin per kilowatt is higher, they switch the machines off. But they're doing it the other way around. They're measuring what the value of Bitcoin is to the Bitcoin layer. Not the, Yes, the dollar is involved at this stage, but the whole aspect that I'm trying to explain is we can remove the dollar from that entirely. You could have Bitcoin citadels that aren't connected to any grid because Bitcoin is essentially a de facto wireless electricity grid because it standardizes a global price for energy that is compared to the revenue rate of how much you can earn per Bitcoin. Per, per terahash per day. And that revenue rate is defined by your efficiency. So again, these three core uh, metrics for your local efficiency, your global access to revenue, and that key comparison between those two decided by your individual access to these two, your uptime and your efficiency on the mining perspective of this. There is a lot to dive into with this but it's all about the different perspectives that you look within. The mining perspective, the mining pool perspective, the developer's perspective, people holding Bitcoin, their perspective, their purchasing power, and their access to block space. So those two Bitcoin unit of account components come in here. The cost to store information online forever, and the cost to buy energy. In the future, 
Bitcoin miners, or even today, are continually moving towards becoming energy producers. And what are they producing energy for? To produce Bitcoin. But if that energy in that moment, in real time, is being directly priced against subsidy and fees, it means global subsidy and fees and their fraction of that and their conversion efficiency gives a direct pricing of how much Bitcoin they're earning per kilowatt hour. So if you want to buy that energy from that miner on that local off grid or large infrastructure scale grid, or maybe even the Buckminster Fuller planetary scale grid, it means we have a global pricing system that we can define an exchange rate from Bitcoin into electrons at the local level. So you can buy your energy from a miner because he has a clear pricing comparison at the global level. It delves into a quite a rabbit hole that you go, hang on, well, if Bitcoin can directly price electricity at a mathematical layer and electricity is used in a countless amount of inputs in the 21st century, well, now you can start creating Bitcoin unit of account connections into everything that requires electricity to produce or even go backwards in the chain. How much electricity can you produce with a barrel of oil? And if that electricity can produce a quantity of Bitcoin, maybe you can start standardizing a price for oil on a Bitcoin unit of account. All these sorts of things. But again, it's about your efficiency at the particular local level. The most efficient mining machines will demand a higher Bitcoin per kilowatt hour rate. To buy that energy is more expensive. They have more efficient compute. And naturally, you'll find more efficient machines closer to cities on larger, uh, more sort of economically developed countries. And what will happen is the less efficient machines will go out into countries that are less economically developed. But it also means that the electricity on a Bitcoin unit of account is cheaper. But here's the thing. As the network is continually expanding in hash rate, it means that those holding Bitcoin, 21 million fixed in supply, um, being priced at the rate of how much uh, subsidy and fees is being distributed to that pool of compute and electricity, that if you're the one holding Bitcoin in any amount, just by holding it and that exchange rate, that cost of production to produce a Bitcoin, if you're on the other side of that, you are trying to buy the energy and switch that miner off, you're able to buy ever increasing amounts of electricity as the production cost of Bitcoin goes up. Basically, what I'm trying to say is the production cost of Bitcoin is a direct exchange rate where you holding Bitcoin can buy electricity in the future when miners are the operators of electricity grids and microgrids and off-grid communities. Why would your neighbor switch his miner off if by delivering the electricity to you, he does it at the same rate he's producing Bitcoin or luck of Bitcoin or just slightly higher and he's captured a premium? And when he switches some of his machines off, he can lower the efficiency and increase his revenue rate with the existing machines online. So there's an elasticity to that as well. I'm gonna stop it there. If you found this video interesting, then like, subscribe, share, send me any comments, questions, queries, and feedback to the email, info at hashpoweracademy, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.